I'm just going to wait for about two minutes or so. so I'll leave it. Yeah, it's clock on the computer saying 459, which is probably the. Uh, no, that's right. Four yeah. Are you on record? Yes. Hey, good evening. Uh, welcome to the December form of Time Ed Revisited, which is in its ninth season. I am Michael Bowes, Executive Director of OLLI, and I am co host with Dr. Valerie Pennanen of Kymet College of St. Joseph. Kymet Revisited is funded in part by the Indian Humanities and the National Endowment for the Humanities. Before we hear from tonight's speaker, um, are there any announcements? Uh, if not, I have uh, two. Ollie's Winter Wonderland at Wolf Lake Festival is on Saturday. January 14. Um, it will include a tree identification walk at Anchors Grove at 1 p.m. and 11 a.m. Zoom meeting on watershed memories. The Kind at Nature Exchange uh, meets via Zoom at 7 p.m. Tuesday, January 17. Teachers in the Illinois and Indiana. Uh, can earn one hour of professional development credit for attending. And I might add a third, uh, Kymet Heritage Partnership is their uh, annual conference uh, begins um, this evening after us, I think, and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. Um, uh, the presentation this evening is being recorded. The recording will be available within a week on Ollie's website. Uh, would everyone please uh, remain on mute? That are uh, our Zoom folks. And after the presentation, we'll have a question and answer session. We uh, could do questions during if you like. They're okay. However, it works best for you. Yeah. Okay. People can interrupt and ask a question um, during the presentation. That's fine. Um, would everyone uh, please remain on mute after the. Uh, okay. Um, tonight we will hear from photographer Bob Mangus, who will be featuring public high schools in Hammond, the old and the new, particularly the new. But there will be a question and answer session following his presentation. Bob. Thank you. Thank you. I uh, first went to the Hammond School Board when they were talking about a new building and asked permission to photograph the old one to maintain the history because so often you don't. Think of things until we're gone. You go, gee, you know, should have done that. I wanted to jump ahead of the should of. And uh, so at any rate, this is a, a fairly, this is a chronological view of the Hammond High building that we all knew. This is the one that preceded it. And before this was a wooden structure. It didn't last very long, got moved um, from this site. And this was built. And from 1893 to 1917, this was used. The original frame buildings began in 1884, and it became the first Hammond Tech store. So this is called Hammond Industrial, and they're yearbooks. So H I H S. So we know that they had that name. Okay, this worked fine when I tested it. Well, let me try over here. I was here when. Can you read what it says at the bottom? Um, uh, 
Well, on this, um, the original high school was begun in 1884 in a wood frame building on this site, moved away to make way for this at Fayette and Holman, which if I looked at the correct corner was Jack Fox clothing store. Um, My space heater, my no. I'm not sure. Well, try the space bar. There's yeah, nothing. Nothing. Return key doesn't do it. No. I don't have anything doing it at the moment. Space bar. I don't know why it's not working. Yeah, I'm baffled as well. Okay. 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 Good. Now the remote's working as well. Okay. On the right is the cornerstone from the building we just saw. And this was taken in the office at the old Hammond High. The new office, in my mind, the old one was by the front doors. The new office was at the far south end. And in 1984, William McNabney wrote an interesting book re, uh, recording the history and developed the time capsule, which it appears to be they excavated some of the cornerstone and then added this black granite on top. And it's, it's not readable, but what it says is that it's to be opened in 2084, 200 years after the first Hammond High School. Wow. So this cornerstone is sitting in a fenced in yard, the backside of Hammond Central. I don't know if that's a permanent location, I didn't get over there to take a photograph of it, and the photographs I have were during construction and they're not worth looking at because they're they're hard to see. So we'll have those later. Getting into the building that I knew from the 1718 school year, the first year at the Calumet Avenue, Highland Avenue corner is Hammond High, and they followed the Ionic Grecian architecture. Has some ornamentation, but not as much as Corinthian and more than Doric. The original name appears to have been Hammond Manual Industrial High School. And, ah, there it is. You can see they scratched out manual on the blueprint hmm. from 1914. T.H. Hutton did this. The fifth generation of Huttons is still in Hammond and spoke at our last look reunion, May 15th of 21, I guess it was. Yeah, 21, because 2021 was last school year there. This was the hope because you have the front, you're looking west at the front of the building, the front doors, the northeast west wing and the southeast west wing. This is the southeast west wing. We can tell that because the chimney is there. It was at the southwest corner of the building. And then some design for the capital that we see up here. Now, the the article down here at the bottom basically says what I've typed up here. This is the first newspaper from the school, October 12, 1915, volume one, number one. And it describes the time frame for the site 
uh, at Highland and Calumet. Plan was to build the main or front section first and it was to be completed by September, nearly a year away. The next section to be built was the boys gymnasium and auditorium. Final construction was to be the east-west wings. All of this was to be completed in about one year's time. It sounds like from the way you read it, it, it could be read another way. So it's not absolutely clear. The reality was that there were lawsuits. All new construction seems to have some kind of delay and, and theirs was lawsuits. Some folks thought it was too much. The final cost for the building after all was said and done was about $200,000. But at that time, big number. Now this is a, a, a Times photograph. It appears to be an, a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. It's a pretty poor image. But uh, one of the things we were able to discover is this is the cornerstone. And that too is in the backyard at Hammond Central. So those are both preserved. This is probably 15 or 16 when it was taken because you don't have the upper floor. And let me mention there, modern buildings would have level one, two, three. This was a classical building. This had a lower level, a main level, and an upper level. So the lower level were two digit rooms, numbers. The main floor was 100 something, starting at the far south end uh, where they had a clothing uh, classroom that was a clothing classroom when I was there, had a little orange tag, which I got off of the door and have at home and is, uh, was still a clothing lab when uh, they closed, when they finished 2021, and that was the last year they were there. This is a remarkably good photograph during construction and uh, probably the 15, 16 era, but maybe 17, they didn't, they finished the building in, 17, in the spring of 17 and the first classes were 17, 18, but, uh, a lot of manual work, very heavy manual work. Um, I would not have wanted to have been a, a person, a craftsman or a laborer. This is what was originally built. And it shows the north end, the central entrance, the south end, and back here is the staircase. You have that at the middle and both ends. And as you can see, there's daylight back here. Now, around behind the corner is the girls' gym. And I think they had the foundation for the auditorium, but a lot of that wasn't done. And this is the 21 year book. And it's surprisingly, they didn't. Uh, they just said Hammond High School uh, from the 21 Dunes. Now this is a blueprint from 1921, page one. This X'd out section right here is the main body we just saw. And the staircases, they're here. The girls gym is in here. And the engine room and the coal bin, the coal bin's back here. I think the fuel room, they called it. Uh, so they had the boiler and an engine room. I'm not quite sure the distinction, but those were there and stayed there the whole time. All of the rest of this was to be built. Now, this is one of the few back pictures of the back of the building but it does show the engine, the engine, the boiler room, the smokestack and everything. This is done after, well, this is the 22 year book and you see the cafeteria was there. It was never designed that way by Hutton. That was added. And my impression was that the cafeteria was in one of the upper floors, which would make it very awkward to work with. 
because every day you got a lot of food you're going to have to haul up there. And no elevators. They didn't have an elevator until after I left. <laughs> and that was one of the pictures I took for the reunions because that was the running joke. You sold elevator tickets to the incoming freshmen. <laughs> now, being from Munster, I went when I was a sophomore, which was typical. And so I had heard about that, so I knew not to buy any. Uh, but I was there as a sophomore, junior and then a senior when I graduated. But uh, yeah, they put in an elevator over here and they built this in after the fire. So no, it was over here. It was on this corner behind this section by, by the staircase and you could go all the way to the roof. Because prior to that, the only access to the roof was over here um, above the main section, but about this end of the building. Here are some, a few shots of the interior in the building. This is a study hall. I think I know where it was. I remember being in a study hall on the top floor at the south end of the building. Um, and when it's in the, 64. Yeah. Cafeteria on the lower level, lots of light because of all the windows. And this is an interesting picture of the auditorium because it's before they put the seats in. I have a picture of the auditorium after they took the seats out. <laughs> with uh, one remarkable flash and uh, it lit the whole room. I'm not quite sure how I did it, but the, what I spent on the camera, it did a good job. But this uh, was a stage that had been widened all the way to the walls and extended. There was a pit in front at the end and these windows were open and it was a very bright and airy place. I mean, it was nice. We had auditoriums there and announcements and whatnot. I had an English class there, but uh, after the fire, it was part of everything that got closed up. Okay, I've lost my light. Should I turn it on? They're a heavy battery user. <laughs> Could be because there's no yeah. light there. Do we have a manual way to operate this? Yeah, I, I oh. can just let me know when you want the slide advanced. Okay, well, then this one is the principal's office at the top. The, I think the finishing of the pool, they, they probably had some foundational work done with the original build. And then um, the second part, there were a boys and a girls pool and they were side by side and there was a wall down between them and the wall supported the floor of the auditorium. At the bottom picture is the boys gym. It had a skylight, it had a running track. The girls gym didn't have that. It was just a gym up to the walls and it, there was no seating in either one. This one skylight leaked when I was there. And so the wooden floor was nice and flat going across, and then it curved up and went down uh -huh. symmetrically on one on both sides. And just for some reason, I was in there a day or two after it had leaked, and it just swelled up the wood. Mm -hmm. And those brick walls were solid. When I when I got pictures of it coming down the building, the wall, the skinny walls were like three layers of brick thick, and each layer is called a wife. W-H-Y or W-H-T-H-E, I think it is. The, the biggest one we found was a foundational wall and was 11. An architect who came up every week got a picture of that and he sent it to me. So I added it into my stuff. Okay, next. Now here we see at the top is the construction of the, of the cafeteria. And this is most of this whole page is really cafeteria. This is the outside of the cafeteria here, inside of course, and then the construction of it. But this was the one thing that was not part of the 14 plans. Everything else appears to be. 
Uh, next. Now, after that, the building really didn't change other than internal modifications. And we found these blueprints in the vault. And so I went and got them scanned. And what I didn't realize at the time, all the other plans were scanned as well. I finally got a set of those for, that I could use for this. And there's more over there I need to go get. Um, next. Here's a lecture room, just to lay out for what I have no idea where it is other than 118, so it's the, the main floor, and it's probably down at the north end, because 101 was the south end, so I'm guessing that's probably the north end. Next. This is uh, the physics room modifications, dated May 19th, 1952. Next, physics and chemistry tables. You'd have to be able to read them, but it's just, there was constant modification to the building, but it was a little here and a little there. Next, uh, student biological desks. And they had hard maple for a top. They had acid, black acid proof finish. And I remember seeing that. In the schools I was in, it's always acid proof. Um, I forget the others. Next. And this one, student table for a physics lab. Physics was typically in the northwest corner, though when I was there, that's where we had art with Ms. Shoot Cagle. Next. And floor plan for domestic science. So this would be down at the south end on the main level. Next. This one intrigued me because when I was taking pictures at George Rogers Clark, I see this, this what looks like a drafting table. And that looks like the blueprint with minor differences. So I threw like those in there. Looks like a map cabinet to me. The what map cabinet? Map maps maps maps. maps. Well, drawing graphic same or... thing. You'd you'd have mm -hmm. lots of paperwork. Sure. Yeah. So sure. uh, probably B size, maybe. I don't think it would take D without being folded. Uh, possibly C, definitely B. Because B is A is just eight and a half by eleven. The B size engineering drawing is like two of those. So it's. 11 by 17. And then you get into C, it's a little bit bigger than D, which I used to see in companies I've worked at. And then E is a big piece of paper. So and that was at Clark? This was at Clark in the media center, what we used to call the library. Hmm. So I threw that in. As far as I know, it's still sitting there if we want it. <laughs> Nobody's done anything with Clark that I know of. No. Next. This is the design of the auditorium floor. So you have all this seating, but over this is the balcony. This was just extended for being able to lay it all out. So the auditorium isn't as long as this, because all of this would be down here somewhere. It would overlap some of the back rows. Next. Then the big event. December 14th, 1967, in the early evening, they had the fire. It was believed to have been started by an arsonist at the north, east or west corner of the building, the north end, either, either way. It was the one thing that would really burn well, and that was the roof. Tar paper, wood. Um, next. So I added a couple more here from the Times. and. Uh, my friend had done the clipping. She had an account with the Times to, to go back through the old stuff. And uh, Ruth Moore is her name. Yes. You know Ruth? Uh, yeah. She's the uh, Historical Society. Yeah. Yeah. She's in my class. I've known her since I was 16. Next. And this is kind of one of the last images. There's several, I have one in the snow and some others, but uh, this is one of the better ones I got. And you can see the 
the changes, the auditor or the gymnasium, some minor stuff out front, but you can see so many of the windows are closed off. Yeah. All the windows when I was there, all of this covered up some beautiful stonework, including the name. The only thing that I identified this building was over the center doorway, the number is 5926, the address. It was 5926 Calumet, and the new one is as well. Um, and that was the only ID on the building, which I thought was just a little sad for such an important building that had produced so many people of note. Athletes, which in the old days, they paid more attention to it, looked like. But one of the guys in my class holds a a named seat in, in um, cellular medicine at Duke. Not exactly an average physician, you know, kind of a high-end guy. And uh, it is complained at Hammond High was he came in third. The, uh, the young lady who came in second was a very quick study. Probably not as bright as he was, but very quick study. <laughs> so she had a tiny bit better grade average by a tiny amount. <clears throat> Next. Now this also gives you an idea of what changed with the building. And the gymnasium at the top, that's the darker area, and it goes all the way back here. They, the, the Hammond Fire Department wanted a parking lot back here, not the football field, so it got moved over here so they could get emergency equipment in close. And the this was added on, and this is the office right here in the corner. This whole section was brand no, this is the new section because here's the wing, here's the auditorium, but this was all filled in. Um, and they replaced the pool. The old pools they covered up and made a band room and an ROTC room. They were on a lower level. Um, there's three different rooms on lower level that people currently wouldn't have any idea. When they were demoing the building, I said, you know, when you get here, there's still stuff underneath the auditorium. And you get into those rooms, I said, there's still stuff below that. And uh, so after that, they came to me when they were near the end of the building. And I, they asked me about the gymnasium. I said, prior to that, it was a parking lot. And prior to that, it was a tennis court. So well, you're not going to find anything down there. Uh, next. I'm sorry. Oh, on that picture we just had. Yeah. Um, one, I don't know if it's going to be a problem or not, but the I'm on the uh, Hammond Sanitary Commission. And the new football field where it is, is over a sewer. Uh, uh, and we made sure that they knew it in case they wanted to move it. So if there's a sewer breakage or something of that sort, they're going to have to tear up the football right. field right. in order to get to it to fix it. But that's where they wanted to put the football field. Where in the football field was it? In the middle or the north end? Oh, I south? don't remember where. Okay, because at the south end. I'm only the liaison. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to show you something at the end that also connects to the football field. Huh. Um, this is hard to read. Class of 1924. I love to go there and sit. I used to do that a lot. I used to go there a lot. You will still do that. Fine. That's been power washed and sitting right in the middle of the front of Hammond Central. And you took that picture. Yes. We're getting there. <laughs> uh, next. I'm glad they saved that. Okay, I zoomed in and, and so we could better see you know, that this was the new section that was added in. This was all new. Uh, this was new. And when I was there, it was, it was uh, steam or hot water heat. In the, in the very beginning, it was coal, massive coal boilers. Then it converted over to um, oil in the late 50s. So you didn't have a big black plume coming out of the back end of the building. And then after the fire, they built 
false roof so they'd have room for duct work. These are all the HVAC units. I counted 20 some. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason that they decided to get rid of the building is that they were all 45 years old. They were done. Not all of them were working. And the cost to do all that would be enormous. So sadly, I mean, the building itself, there was nothing wrong with that. But uh, it got decided that it should be replaced next. So here is a lot of this has been demolished. Very little bit left up here, another few days. This is Hammond Central, the academic wing. And then you get into the music area, which is noisy, and that's why it has pea gravel on the roof. Not here, not here, not here, not anywhere else, but right here where you have music and band. And you're going to have the most sound. This is an auditor, or this is a gymnasium, or two gymnasiums. This is a gymnasium, cafeteria, uh, offices, um, fabulous pool, and it's a far end gun range. Unheard of. Yeah. But they have one. I was I was happy to see it because they have ROTC. Yeah. It's part of it. Why not teach the kids the proper way to handle weapons? That's how I learned. That's how most of us did back in the day. Now, Ken, have you seen this part? You recognize it? Okay. You got the same thing under the south end of the football field. That is the retention pond for this area. You got to retain your own water. You can't ship it off to somebody else, as we all did in the good old days. These are perforated pipes that we could probably walk through. And they've got fabric over them, and they're sitting in gravel and sand, and exactly how they assemble, I don't know. But all of the drains in the parking lot go there. And from there, it seeps into the ground. What about so, the roof of the building? Does that go in there too? Um, it goes there, it goes up here. This is the parking lot. Mm -hmm. This is the athletic, and this is where we're doing the same thing that was done here. Oh, okay. This is supposed to be the baseball diamond and the girls' softball, and they ran out of money, just like they did when they built the first one. It woke a curve. And we'll see that um, next. The so one thing that is still there from Hammond High, this old foundation, the old beams, um, they had a machine, and I didn't get a good picture of it. Here's the slinger on it. All of this quote unquote gravel was foundation. Why ship it? Cost a fortune. They ground it up, they brought a brand new machine in, ground it up, and that's the base for the parking lot. Parking lot that runs from Eaton down to Highland. Eaton only goes to service the street. It does not go over to Toll or Seoul anymore. That's all part of the campus because Hammond School City swapped the Clark Athletic acreage for acreage down here. So they, so they have a single campus between Hammond Central, the athletic area, and the Career Center. All one contiguous site. Next. This is the finished. Mary, there's the bench. I can still go there. Absolutely clean. Uh, but here are the, the big pipes, and you get a sense of the scale, some of the old foundation. We're fast on time. Ready for the next? Yeah, that's the last one. Oh,
How much damage did that fire do? The, the one that you mentioned, nineteen sixty-seven. You said. Or? Yeah, the fire. Yeah. There were pictures uh, from the ground looking up at the building, and you could see daylight from the main windows uh, through the building. So it had it had done an enormous amount of damage. Yeah. I was amazed when I walked through the north end that it looked so much like the rest of the building. Huh. Now, the halls at Hammond High looked like white subway tile. They weren't. They're white glazed brick. Everything in that building was brick, except for the i beams Solid structure. It sounds oh, like. it was phenomenal. And the way they brought it down, they had what was called a, a material handler. I don't know have that. It needs batteries. <laughs> uh, a big clamshell with just ribs in it and, and, and all connected. And it would just, they take a bite of a corner of a wall, you know, about as big as this, and let it drop. And they had some of the old beams sitting around the edge. They had a chain link fence all the way around the site to keep people off. And they would just nibble away at the building at a very steady pace. There were about 40 guys that worked those, that equipment, all spoke Spanish. That was their native language. And they all worked at a steady pace and got a great deal done in about four months. They took the whole place down. But the number one guy told me at the end, he said, we could not afford to have insurance claims. He goes, who's going to hire a demo company that has insurance claims? And you check those things out. You need very safe people. So there's so much that can go wrong. They had these huge water cannons. They weren't shooting a stream of water, they were shooting a fog. But it kept the, the dust down. Uh, there were complaints of um, asbestos in the air. There wasn't a lick of it. First thing they did was go in and remediate the building once they took it over. Um, Technically, that Sunday, I was there on a Saturday and we got the last stuff out. And I have pictures of things that nobody else has the heating system under the floor. I mean, I literally stuck my camera down and just started taking pictures. I couldn't get my head down there, but I could get the camera down. So I've got a few good pictures of the radiators and they were lots of surface on them. You knew they were radiators, but they were full of steam. And then they had pneumatic controls that worked the ducts. And they had chases or chimneys running up between the classrooms. And I mean, they were the size of a chimney going up to the main floor and the second floor. And then they had others bringing the air down so you had a natural airflow. I don't recall finding fans in there. In a few places I would find radiators but mostly you didn't see them. So I wish I'd paid more attention when I was there. Yeah. I'm curious how they managed uh, in the immediate aftermath of the fire. Now, you gave the date a couple of weeks before Christmas, uh, so there would have been vacation, but then what did they do in terms of where they had classes? The biggest thing they did was to go to tech and reschedule tech. And Tech and Am and I were kind of one. In addition, all those classrooms at the Presbyterian Church at Highland and Holman, that you're well aware of, had classes. I forget who told me that, but uh, there were classes there. So, and there were probably classes elsewhere. Yeah. Now, this is the oldest school. Clark was begun in 1931, as was City Hall. That's the numbers on the back of their building. I looked up Morton. They began in 37, which surprised me. The, and the high school the, building. The Not old the elementary. One. Pardon? Not the elementary Morton. It is now on, on uh, the street I can't think of. Marshall. Marshall, thank you. That's where my mom first taught. I'd been there, and that was the old building. Then they built a new one in the later 60s, 
and she moved over there. And then in the 70s somewhere, once students started getting rights, she retired. He'd gone from teaching third grade at Harding to junior high English at Lafayette down the street from Hammond High. And the last thing she did was taught French at Morton High School, which is why I took French. I figured I'd have a lot of help at home. <laughs> I don't have a talent for it. <laughs> One year was like, that was it. How do they handle the kids' schedules while the construction was going on during the school year? Uh, the- With the fire? No, uh, this last year, you know, when they were building the new school and all the heavy construction was around and yet there were still classes in the old building. The old building ran until um, we had our last look reunion, and then they scheduled, that was May 15th, and then they scheduled one for the following Saturday, and I went back and took pictures there. I got a lot more classroom pictures because the classrooms were ready for, or had been in use, because when I was there before, it was summer. Well, classrooms are all empty and the chairs are out in the hall. You know, they're, they're cleaning and doing those things. Mm -hmm. So I got some great pictures of normal classrooms in the old building. My favorite was walking a guy through, he was telling me about it, it was his home room and it was one of the science rooms. And they had the prep rooms between all these other science rooms and they all connected. Um, but the prep room could be shared, so however they wanted to do it. And there's this big yellow slide roll that once <laughs> had hung over the bullet or the blackboard. I didn't know what it was. I bet not. I knew what it was, but I'm old enough. So anyway, the... Uh, now, now, I said before, Clark began in 1931. Yeah, early 30s. Later, uh, a few years later, I think. A few years later, they added the auditorium. The auditorium. Yeah, it was oh. both in the 30s, as I recall. Yeah. Yeah, okay. and Morton. 31, I thought that's earlier than I thought. That was the first the beginning of it. And so I, and then I, I volunteered. See, Hammond Central, the design was Hammond Middle School and Hammond High School. Left and right side, line right down the middle, you had front doors for the high school, you had front doors on, on where that curved there, that section is, you had that for the middle school. And they hadn't, they hadn't sat down and done the thinking they should have done decades ago. The population in Hammond grew until I was there and immediately thereafter, the next year or two maybe was the peak. And then Hammond's, Population has been declining. It's now down to 1940s. You don't need four high schools. And fortunately, they made the decision, we don't need four high schools, what we need are two. So we'll just, we've got Eggers, it's in good shape. We'll just use Hammond Central and not make it Hammond High and, and Eggers or the new Eggers and new Hammond High which is why you have, um, we could go back and put this up and I can show where things are. So we can back up a few slides. If you can show me, I can do it. Let's see if we can get it back. Well, we just wait and we'll go forward and show me how to do it, don't do that. There's nobody on Zoom, so. I, I, do do? I just push the down arrow. Yeah, okay, I do that on my laptop. Okay, we'll go down here. Get to one of those satellite views, which are so handy. Okay, this one. This was to have been the middle school up to the middle shared media center on the third floor and the high school up here. 
This is all Hammond Central High School. This is the Black Fox Theater, the music area, which is why this all has gravel on it. Um, then you've got classrooms, practice rooms, all sorts of things in here. Main hall here, cafeteria, uh, service offices, the head custodians in here. This is the loading dock. And you have a major um, gymnasium here with great seating, both sides, Hammond walls, you know, logos, all of that. Beyond that, you've got another gymnasium, doesn't even have a wood floor, but it has a somewhat equivalent floor where they can use for practice. Um, yeah. Keep going. You're almost there. Okay. There. Yeah, there. Yeah. This gives us a good satellite view. They were just finishing up the demo and they've already started construction here. And this is the demo at the north end. That's the very last bit they did. And then they were out of there and they had nothing but construction for the parking lot. North of this, is the athletic field. And this same water absorption unit is at the south end of the football field. And I was told that you could have an eight inch rain, have it stop, and you could start the ball game minutes later. That it would drain that well into this holding area. And then that could take the next few weeks to drain. You don't want to have too many of those day after day. <laughs> I mean, that's how Munster flooded in 08. We had three days of rain. It was the tail end of Katrina. So you've got an auto, uh, gymnasium here. The girls use for volleyball. And uh, I'm not sure what now, but uh, this is really kind of a common area. And then you've got specialized stuff. You've got a few classrooms here and there, but mostly this is all the academic area. And uh, this has all been planted nicely and graded and everything. So it looks terrific. I had those shots, but I didn't bring them because it wasn't, I wasn't set up to. <clears throat> you know what the current enrollment is? Or so what is it, Hammond High? Uh, the Hammond Central is, was designed for 1850. There's always some plus and minus in there right. that you right. can do because Hammond, I'm not sure what Hammond High was designed for, but there were 2,000 students when I was there. There were 500 in my class. I've seen four or something, and I've seen five or something. Big class. Well, you know, but the, the population of Hammond was 112,000. Now it's about 80,000, 80, 70, 70, somewhere 70 in there. Something. Yeah. So it, it's, it's dropped a good bit. So now two high schools can be filled up and operated economically, and it makes sense. So Hammond Central has about 1850 or it's a capacity there? It's right around there, and I don't know the number, but it's all of Clark and a little bit of Gavitt yeah. and all yeah. of Hammond High. Right. And Morton is most of Gavitt and all of Morton. And they're about the same. Morton, if you're leaning toward the arts, you'd want to go to Morton. That's where they've got them. If you're leaning toward STEM, you want to go to Hammond High. That's and what I've heard. One of the board members very adamant and really pushed for STEM, even when she wasn't. She got reelected later and she's been pushing STEM all along. So having and if you want to be in the arts and you live in Robertsdale, they'll bust you. Really? That's my understanding. But you can take one down to Central and one over maybe mm -hmm. or something. I know they bought 11 new buses as part of this change in plans. 
And I have a feeling the, the superintendent pushed it. What are they going to do with the old Clark building? I don't know. They were hoping to sell it to Hammond. Sell it to the city? City loves having all that empty land at the South of Park Athletic Area because yeah. now they can sell it to developers and add a have, lot of assessed valuation. I think they have to advertise it uh, to, uh, as, as a potential charter school or if somebody, if somebody wants to. You got a school building there uh, with pools. I don't know if they're still current standard. They didn't have water. Um, I don't think. No, they had water, but Hammond and Gavit did not have water in their pools. I was told Hammond couldn't afford it. I believe it. They didn't. They only have like 800 people in the building. So I, you walk through there, and you know when I walk through there, crowds. You know, a yeah. crowd was going this way, and a crowd was going this way. Maybe more. Yeah, and I was the lead year. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Because you, you born in forty six to sixty four yeah. is the boomer years, and I was a forty six group. And I had wow. Now I did shoot the entire Hammond Central building because, as we saw, we saw the only pictures I could find of new construction at Hammond High back in the teens. Why why do that again? You know, know what it looked like before you changed it. So I shot all sorts of stuff. I haven't I need to go in that that little courtyard and it's it's walled off uh with the hit of the not hit stone, cornerstones. So where's the middle school now? It's still uh Eggers over Eggers. near Harrison right. Park. Right. So yeah, but Hammond Central, and I, I uh, had had permission from the superintendent to take pictures of some of the sports pictures, but nobody else knew it. And that was my mistake. So when they were building Hammond Central, and I'm taking pictures of the demolition of Hammond High, before school started, I just roam around the building. And I mostly started at the south end and just kept working my way north as the building kept getting torn down. So I was getting good pictures from just outside the equipment, but I was out of the way and, you know. But I also got permission to go on the roof to get good pictures. And he, he, the Scott and I walked down to the meeting they were having and I made sure he told everybody there that they knew, the principal knew and everybody else knew, I could go on the roof, not by myself, which is an unsafe thing to do, but with, you know, some a custodial person typically. Um, sometimes it was the guy in charge of the, the contractor, the contractor's person in charge of the site. Um, but I also got over on uh, the city hall roof and uh, got some pictures of the site, uh, which is something you don't get much of. And in thanks, I uh, got a nice picture of city hall from the roof of Hammond Central. And took it over there and went to the mayor's office and gave it to this young lady and I never heard a word. And he knows me. We had to deal with him during the flood. And I was on the council then. He he was busy this fall. The mayor. Yeah. This I'm was not, a year not ago. in town for all the time. This was a year ago when they first started taking, they took down the south end of Hammond High. <laughs> and I had a, a perspective that you couldn't get before. Yeah. I didn't understand the purpose for having the, the pea gravel over the music wings. What dampens the vibration? Really? Yes. That's what the architects tell me. I don't know. But that's where you have the, the greatest the sound level. Instruments. It's over the black box theater. Mm -hmm. They don't have a regular auditorium? No. School? No. What they have is the same level floor. Behind, you have a service room for sets and things like that. And I don't think it's big enough, probably. Because I remember the, the prop room at Hammond High. That was good sized. And then everybody spray painted the walls and stuff. It's not like an old theater where they signed the back wall. I've been to the Delphi 
restoration of their opera house. They have signatures from 1800 something from the actors who have been there. And people you and I have heard of, we got a tour. With, my wife and I got a personal tour of this nice young lady through the whole thing. I grew up in Delphi, so we go down there and the sandwich shop on uh, Main Street has phenomenal breaded pork tenderloin sandwiches. <laughs> and we go occasionally just for lunch and then we go for a big walk. We walked over a park on the west side of town and about a hundred yards, which you get down there, you cross the river on um, suspension bridge and about a hundred yards and you're at the Wabash where confluence of Deer Creek and Wabash. And I grew up on Deer Creek. Yeah. That's where the murder occurred. The, the two girls and they found the guy. Yeah, apparently they did. Yeah, about a guy. Yes. Yes. He, said, he says he's innocent. Yeah. I I, I don't doubt it. He doesn't want to die. Yeah. He ought to die slowly. But after a lot of years of investigating, they never gave that one up. I would. I get emails from the state police, and you'd see it occasionally. It would pop up. So they they. They've stayed active on that. And Delphi did too. You go down there and you'd find pictures in the windows of the stores and stuff. Here's pictures that came out of uh, Libby's camera. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Abby and Libby. Right. So. What a tragedy. Oh, I can't imagine. Very interesting. Thank you. Yeah. I didn't go to Hammond School. No, my I, school was built about the same time either, as Hammond High was. And it was interesting hearing you describe the, the, the pools and the gymnasium and things of that sort. Our auditorium was over the cafeteria. And because the auditorium slopes down, uh, when you walked into the cafeteria, the first thing you did was go down about seven steps. Mm. And the floor of the cafeteria was lower to allow yeah. the, uh, yeah. the auditorium oh. to slope. And uh, we had a boys' gym and a girls' gym, a boys' pool and a girls' pool, pool. But they were all small, they were all non regulation size. You didn't say that these were, so I assumed that the basketball court was a regular size. The ones I remember seeing when I was younger, if it wasn't a full size, they could shorten it up, but then your back line, you'd have two lines instead of a center line. Mm -hmm. so you'd have them like this, and you still have the circle for the jump ball there. And I remember oh, seeing some of those. Yeah. In, um, I played sixth grade basketball in Delphi, so we we travel close by, and I see ball get, or floors like that. We never had a good, good, great basketball team, and of course the kids blamed it on the architect. <laughs> you know. The, the, they practiced in a in a gym that wasn't standard size. Yeah. Therefore, don't expect too much. Well, like an Olympic size swimming pool. Yeah, and yeah, the swimming pool that. was not. <laughs> well, it's a little bit like ballroom size. dancing. I worked with my my instructor, and we had a routine. And the floor at Second Street in in Cherville is nearly square. It's a rectangle, but it's nearly square. It's two thousand square feet. We go to this place in the western suburbs, and it's like two to one. No. <laughs> so instead of going down here, we go this way at an angle, and that way at an angle, and <laughs> Sue and I made it work. <laughs> but it is, it's odd, you know, you, you practice and set Very something good. up one, <laughs> thank you, set it up one way, and then you hit a whole new floor, and yeah. Come to the dance showcase December 10 and see professional dancing. <laughs> well, I'm not going to this one because I don't like the floor. They're doing it at, at um, yeah, I, I never remember the name, but it's not a ballroom floor. It's a wedding reception floor. You know, you can, you can do the hokey pokey, but it, <laughs> box drive doesn't work real well. Okay, I, I would just like to bring this to a close. And I wish to thank you for coming last step. Thank you for inviting me. Really enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, the next forum will feature uh, Professor Dave Dolak of Columbia College, and he will be talking on.
County Event Geology. And that will be at 5 p.m. on Tuesday, January 3rd, 2023. So I want to wish everybody uh, happy holidays and uh, we'll, we'll see you on January 3rd. Okay. Very nice. Oh, I won't need to ride today. Okay. Good to see you, Larry.